But uh, I thought I'd take a little time tonight and talk about one of, one of the things the Lord spoke to me about, and we're going to start talking about it on Sunday in some uh, <clears throat> energetic depth, is that I believe we, we desperately need in, in uh, these United States uh, just a move of God. Yes, you know, it's revival time again. Yes, Amen. And uh, some things that uh, come to mind when I start thinking about that uh, are, uh, first of all, if we're going to have a revival, that usually starts with me. You know, instead of me sitting around wishing y'all would shape up, I usually need to, I usually need to start with me and, and uh, then try to get you to follow. So uh, that's how I got onto this line of thinking. But the uh, the thing the Lord spoke to me it was uh, actually uh, said it real clear to me while we were in uh, Henderson, Nevada, the first of the month at the FCF Regional Conference. And, uh, Brother Terry was preaching. Terry Matthews, Amen. We're gonna have to have Terry come preach for us again one of these days. Amen. That's why, because everybody gets all jazzed up and kind of. But uh, guy's pretty deep in the in in the Holy Ghost, you know. And uh, he uh, he said something. He said, I, "I'm I'm uh, I believe that this will be a, a time of bringing fresh fire to the church." And then that phrase "fresh fire" just uh, really stuck in my spirit. And uh, I just I wrote it down. I said, "I desire fresh fire." <laughs> Amen. Sounds like a chorus coming on, doesn't it? But uh, but then, uh, immediately after I, I, I made that note, uh, I heard the Holy Ghost say, there's a difference between fresh fire and strange fire. So come prepared Sunday. <laughs> but uh, with the idea that revival begins at home, begins with me, uh, I thought... Uh, it, it behooves us, I think, to take a few moments to take a look at ourselves and where we are individually and personally. And uh, since that's what I've been doing uh, this last couple of weeks, and especially this week, I thought I'd let you join me. Uh, this morning I, I was uh, just searching the word on the subject again. And uh, in Psalm 119, let's turn there. I believe that if you'll apply just a couple of these... Uh, simple principles that we'll talk about tonight over the next couple of days that you would find yourself uh, really jazzed up by Friday, New Year's Day. Amen. While I was uh, away at my own little retreat uh, this month, uh, God did something in me. I don't know how to describe it exactly. But I really have had been struggling to put it in words. I mean, I've been doing this a long time, so it's not like I never got along with the Holy Ghost before. You understand what I'm saying? But... Uh, it just it has made me weird. I mean, even more so than usual. <laughs> but uh, I uh, Sunday morning we we're practicing a psalm, getting ready for church. I couldn't sing it. Couldn't sing the words without choking up, and tearing up. Now you know, there's a. There, there, now we did a song tonight that I used to not be able to sing. Uh, Here I am to worship. But that was for that was a very personal situation. My, my mama, when she was uh, getting ready to go home to be with the Lord, she was in the hospice place. And she was uh, just barely conscious. And I had a, a CD of Randy Travis singing Christian songs. She loved Randy Travis. So I put it on in her room, you know. And every time he would start singing, Here I Am to Worship, uh, even though she couldn't talk, she wouldn't open her eyes, but her little hand would just go. Yeah, man. So that, that's why I had a hard time singing that song for a long time. That was 2007. I still choke up every once in a while. But, uh, so that one was really personal. But, but Sunday was just, I couldn't sing the song about uh, the harvest is plentiful, laborers are few. Amen, aquí, and via me, me. Remember that? We sang it in Spanish because we were sending out a team to Mexico. Right? But uh, here I am, send me from Isaiah chapter 6. Couldn't get it out. Choked up. Well, now, I'm, I'm a... I'm passionate about a lot of things, but I'm also extremely reserved personally most of the time. If, if you catch me being emotional in public, you have caught a rare occasion. Amen. But I couldn't get past it. So it's something, I don't know how to just, like I said, I got no words for it. Whatever it was, it was good. Amen. So in Psalm 119, uh, in the 25th verse, we're going to read the Daleth section. It says, I'm going to read from the New Living first. I lie in the dust, revive me by your word. 
I told you my plans, and you answered. Now teach me your decrees. Help me understand the meaning of your commandments, and I will meditate on your wonderful deeds. I weep with sorrow. Encourage me by your word. Keep me from lying to myself. Give me the privilege of knowing your instructions. I have chosen to be faithful. I have determined to live by your regulations. I cling to your laws, Lord. Don't let me be put to shame. I will pursue your commands, for you expand my understanding. That's a wonderful passage. I want to read it also from the New King James. If you'll bear with me. Verse 25 says, My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. I have declared my ways, and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts. So shall I meditate on your wonderful works. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove from me the way of lying, and grant me your law graciously. I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Do not put me to shame. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. I love that last verse. I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. Praise God. Well, there are several things in this uh, passage that I think will help you if you'll just uh, take a little time in the next couple of days. Take a moment off from the football game. Amen. And take a minute uh, to uh, seek the face of the Lord. Amen. Revive me, Lord, according to your word. Notice, first of all, that Different translation take different tacks on verse 25 where he says, Revive me. The New Living says, Revive me by your word. And the New King James says, Revive me according to your word. Uh, different uh, translators have taken different tacks on that. Some of them go with the uh, idea of the New Living, which is, Revive me by your word. In other words, your word will revive me. Amen. Others take the flip side of that, which is, your word has promised revival. I want it. I like both of them myself, so I just choose to believe both of them. Uh, but the word promises us continual revival. Ephesians 5.18 in the Amplified Bible says, Don't get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be ever filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit. Be ever filled. The, uh, the Greek language is, is really in the continual present participial tense. It means be being filled. If we were going to translate it literally, that's what we would say. Be being filled. There's a constant uh, renewal and infilling of the Spirit that's supposed to be ours. Sometimes we think about being filled with the Spirit as an event. But being filled with the Spirit is a lifestyle of be being filled. Be continually filled with the Spirit, some translations say. I like that. Be ever stimulated. <laughs> Praise God. By the Holy Ghost. Amen. I believe that we can, I believe we should, as a matter of fact, believe God for continual refreshings, refillings, and renewings from the Spirit. Amen. We don't, I remember a, a, a fellow years ago. You remember Marvin Ladner? Remember old Marvin? Well, I like Marvin. But he was the stiffest man I've ever been around in my life. He was a CB. <laughs> and he looked like he was on parade all the time. <laughs> But uh, Marvin was raised in the assemblies of God in the, in the state of Maine. And uh, you just have to be a nor'easter to understand the character and the, the, the personalities from that part of the world. But uh, Marvin was not given to public display, to say the least. But uh, we were having a revival meeting, and we really did too. But Marvin brought his little girl, uh, who was, I don't know, maybe two or three at the time, and uh, up in the prayer line, I can't remember what she was up there for. But, um, Marvin's standing there, you know, at attention, holding the little girl. And uh, Brother Danny uh, comes down the line. And, and uh, Brother, Brother Danny flowed in the, in the prophetic gift a, a great deal. And in that particular meeting, he was 
really in his heyday. And uh, he's coming down the line. It's a long line. There are a bunch of people. But he gets to Brother Marvin, you know, and, and the Marvin says he, he, you know, pointed to the little girl. He came up to get the little girl prayed for. And Danny just stopped. He looked at Marvin and he said, you were filled with the Holy Spirit one time and spoke in tongues and you haven't spoken since. God will refill you now. <laughs> Speak! Wow. Undala by shaking away he went. And sure enough, <laughs> it, he had got filled with the Holy Ghost at youth camp when he was, in, when he was a kid and spoke in tongues and never spoke in tongues again until that night. Amen. And so you know, Marvin got loosened up. Praise God. Amen. Amen. But uh, uh, a lot of people are that way. You know, it was an event. It was something that happened to them somewhere along the way. And they had, a, you know, and it was a genuine experience. Thank God for it. But the continual filling aspect of it uh, is something that was kind of lost on them, you know. And the, the uh, uh, I believe that that's something that we ought to seek for, believe for, and do whatever we have to do to put ourselves in a position to receive. Amen. Amen. And uh, certainly the word is also the source of our renewal. In the 107th verse of Psalm 119, the Message Bible, I said, like, I like this a lot. It said, everything's falling apart on me, God. Put me together again with your word. I like that. Put me together again with your word. His word will put us together again. In the John 6, 63, the Lord Jesus, uh, in the, one of his more interesting conversations with his disciples, uh, in the midst of that, in the 63rd verse, said, The Spirit alone gives eternal life. Human effort accomplishes nothing. And the very words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. The very words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. Take a look back at the words God has spoken to you. Let's make that personal. Amen. Over your life with Him. If you've been serving Him for any length of time, somewhere along the way, He's impressed on you some things that are specific between you and Him. Go back and revisit those things. Amen? And then certainly go back and revisit the things that... Uh, look back in your notes. Look in the margins of your Bible. Amen? Wherever you write things down. If you don't write things down, just repent and start. Amen? But to make special space for His Word in your life. Not just in the next two days, but in general. But for sure in the next couple of days. Uh, don't just reach in your promise box. Y'all remember the promise box? Uh, forget about the magnets on your refrigerator door. <laughs> Amen. The promise box was a, was a, a, a marketing ripoff back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, from the Christian Bookkeeper Association, Booksellers Associations. They, they would, uh, uh, it, was, it was like fortune cookies, only they didn't go to the trouble to actually give you a cookie. And they would they put little strips of paper with scriptures on them, put them in a box, and then the idea was you come and pull your promise out every day, and that's your word for the day. And if that's all the scripture you're eating, you are starving. Amen. Open the Bible and begin to read and let the Lord speak to you out of his word. Amen? Amen. Take a little effort. And uh, ask him for understanding. That's what this man was doing in Psalm 119 in our passage. Ask him, Lord, give me understanding according to your word. Open your Bible. Ask God to give you understanding. Esteem the word for what it is, spirit and life. Amen. And then allow the Holy Ghost to speak to you from the word. Are you with me? Amen. You think you could find 15 minutes to get that done in the next 72 hours? Come on. Amen. And then I love the, uh, the, the uh, in the New Living Translation, where he said, keep me from lying to myself. Give me the privilege of knowing your instructions. What a great sentence. Keep me from lying to myself. All of us do it. We kid ourselves about stuff. Sometimes we quite consciously do it. We just, I've heard people say, I just don't want to think about that. Come on, how many have been there? I just, come on, we just make, some days we just choose. I don't want to think about that. That's way too much trouble. Come on. But just for the next couple of days, ask him to let you see you. 
Take off your sunglasses that are coated with blame. Because one of the things we do when we don't want to look at ourselves is we put it off on other people, other circumstances, even on God. Take off the blame glasses for just a few minutes and take responsibility and own your own situation. <laughs> own your own spiritual condition. If you're in a bad space spiritually, and I will just say this, if you've been around here for six months and you're still in a bad space spiritually, it's on you. Amen. Amen. Own your own emotional condition. I'm so depressed. Get over it. It's not that easy, but it is doable. Amen. It's not something somebody else did to you. Own your own physical condition. Amen. But you just don't understand. You're right, I don't, but God does, and He has provided for you. Own your own financial condition. Ain't anybody else going to do anything about it. Own the condition of your own relationships. I mean, just for a few minutes, ask the Lord to show you the actual condition of your life in those areas. Spiritual, emotional, physical, financial, and relational. He will. Amen. Look in Revelation chapter 2. This is Jesus speaking to the churches. Revelation chapter 2. And let's look in the fourth verse. He actually liked this church. Well, he did. He said, you know, y'all been doing pretty good. That's a very loose Oklahoma paraphrase. But yeah. The church at Ephesus. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. In the fourth verse, he said, But I have this complaint against you. You don't love me or each other as you did at the first. Look how far you've fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I'll come and remove your lampstand from its place among the churches. Now, he's not talking to an individual here. He's talking to the church as a whole. You understand that. But I think we can take it and apply it to ourselves individually, don't you? I mean, just take a moment to say, how do I compare today to when I first came to the Lord? I thought it was interesting. The only two things he measured him against was their love for him and their love for each other. That's the only thermometer we need. Amen. Come to think of it, that kind of reflects the uh, when the, the, the uh, Pharisees asked him about what's the great commandment in the law, what did he say? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself. Hey, there we go. So he hadn't changed his tune at all, has he? Remember when you first came to the Lord, how fired up you were? Not just emotionally, but man, I could devour the scriptures by the hour. I could pray in tongues until the cows came home. Some of you city people don't know about the cows coming home, but they do. Amen. I used to get a lot of fun tormenting cows, but anyway. Yeah. The point is this, that uh, over the years, life has a tendency to uh, kind of drag. It's not that we just wake up one day and say, no, I just don't love the Lord anymore. And, uh, you know, his people just kind of irritate me, and I'm not going to put up with them anymore. We don't make a conscious moment where we decide that, but it just slowly but surely kind of seeps out of us as the world uh, impinges on our existence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Jesus said, I got a complaint against you. I like that stuff, you know. He didn't say, I have a lot against you, which is a King James. You know? You know, I got you know, to chat with you about something. 
Amen. And, uh, and that is, uh, go back and do the stuff you did in the beginning. Amen. How much more shall we be fired up about the Lord now? So I don't know about you, but for the last 35 years, he has been amazingly faithful to me. Not because of me, but in spite of me most of the time. <laughs> really, you know? And then let's look in chapter 3 of Revelation. Chapter 3. And let's go down to the famous Laodicean church, which is famously called the lukewarm church. Revelation 3. I'm going to begin with verse 15. He said, I know all the things you do, that you're neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. But since you're like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Whoa. I don't want to be in that line, do you? You say, I am rich, I have everything I want, I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. My, my, my. So I advise you to buy gold from me. Gold that's been purified by fire. Then you'll be rich. Also buy white garments from me so you'll not be ashamed by your nakedness and ointment for your eyes so you will be able to see. I correct and discipline everyone I love so be diligent and turn from your indifference. Look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in. We'll share a meal, man, like friends. Now, uh, that last verse is used by every evangelist in the history of the modern world. But he wasn't talking to sinners. He was talking to the church. Come on. Everybody say he's talking to me. Amen. Behold, talking to me. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. You know, if you'll just let me in. We can come in and have dinner. We'll chat a little bit. We'll straighten some of this stuff out. I'll bring my own eyes out and grease you up real good. <laughs> What's he, what, what is that verse telling me? It's telling me he wants to help me. He's begging me to let him help me. Amen. But what's their problem? Self-delusion. Amen. Going back to our, our verse in Psalm 119. Don't let me lie to myself. <laughs> Amen. So over the next couple of days, just take a few minutes and say, Lord, I don't want to lie to myself. Let me see myself the way you see me for just a minute. Amen. And then when he, when he opens the door and comes in and sits down, don't run off screaming. <laughs> Sit there with him. Let, let him do the fine-tuning. Because we all need some. I said we all need some. Come on. Amen. Get our priorities back where they belong, as they were in the beginning. Amen. Are you with me? You all mad now? You going to go home? Amen. Uh, notice also in uh, verse 30, he said, I have chosen to be faithful. I have determined to live by your regulations. New King James says, I have chosen the way of truth. I have chosen. Everybody say chosen. Amen. There, there's a place of making some choices. And let me just say this. A choice has to do with actions, not just thoughts. Amen. I saw somebody on Facebook today. Uh, posted a road sign and said, if you get this, hit like. Unfortunately, I got it. But it, it was a road sign that, you know, there was a, an arrow pointing this way for one town and, and uh, an arrow pointing this way for the other town. The one on this side said clowns, and the one on this side said jokers. jokers thank you. <laughs> Can anybody sing it with me? 
Clowns to the left of me. Jokers to the right. Here I am, stuck in the middle. Yeah, okay. There we go. Unfortunately, I got it. But, the, but I thought the point was well taken. There are a lot of us that see the sign, and we can recognize, you know, clowns this way, jokers this way. Where am I? Stuck in the middle. recognizing that you've come to a fork in the road, acknowledging the existence of the fork in the road, looking at the map and discovering what's at the end of the road on both sides of the fork. All of those things are fine, but none of that constitutes a decision. Knowing the facts of the situation, knowing the scripture of the situation, knowing the unction of the spirit in the situation, knowing even knowing the nature of the choices in the situation is not a decision. A choice means action, not thought. Recognizing the fork in the road does not get you the same benefits as picking a path. Amen. The word decision uh, comes from, I believe it's a Latin word for a division. Amen. Deciding means I'm choosing one thing over another. I'm saying yes to something, and at the same time I'm saying no to the other. Some decisions will help you. Because once you start down the path that you choose, stay on the road. Don't go back. Amen. He tells us here, he has chosen. How do you say it? I have chosen the way of truth. The New Living Translation said, I love this, I have chosen to be faithful. I have chosen to be faithful. I have chosen to be faithful. Think about that for a minute. Uh, Some of the character traits that that, uh, we listed as a group earlier were, let's see, dependable, loyal, trustworthy. Amen? What are all those things talking about? Faithfulness. That's what faithfulness means, is dependability. I've chosen to be faithful. I've chosen to run the course of your commandments. I have chosen the path of dependability and trustworthiness. Choose to be faithful. Faithful means that I do what I'm uh, supposed to do, what I know to do, what I'm committed to do, even when I don't feel like doing it and when other options come up that would seem uh, to be more enticing at the moment. Amen. Choose to be faithful. I don't feel like reading my Bible every morning, but I choose to be faithful. Why? Because I made a decision. Amen. Amen. Now you could apply that to other areas of life for sure. Amen. We won't go any further down that road or we'll be meddling for sure. Choose to be faithful. Choose his plans over your own. I love what it said in the New Living Translations in verse 26. It says, I told you my plans, and you answered. Now teach me your decrees. I mean, isn't that how most of us pray? We inform the Lord of what we've decided we'd like for him to help us do? Come on. I told you my plans. No, if I'm going to choose the way of faithfulness, I need to let him tell me his plan. Amen. Well, how's this? If I know his plans and yet choose mine, I would have to call that sin. Amen. Hopefully the PC police are not here tonight, but that's what that is. Amen. That's what got Adam in trouble, if I remember correctly, wasn't it? Choose his plans over your own. Why? Because you were designed to fulfill his will, not yours. And somebody said, somebody said it. His way is always better than yours. Always. See, that, that's the delusion that we get, is that we're giving up something to serve the Lord. Amen. It may seem like you're giving up something, but his way is always better 
better, and He knows your well-being better than you do. If you don't believe that, you need a bigger God. Hallelujah. Choose His plans over your own. I won't ask for uh, an enumeration, but most of us immediately thought of things where we've just decided to do what we wanted to do. I remember when we moved to Arizona. It's kind of amazing anybody can remember anything that long. But, but uh, this year was 20 years. It'll be 21 in February. And uh, I, re I didn't want to move to Arizona. I wanted to move to Florida. I had it all figured out. And it was, I mean, it, was a, it wasn't, you know, for horrible reasons necessarily. I was going to work in a ministry there. Had a good situation. That was what I wanted to do. Made good sense to me. Come on. <laughs> but, for better or for worse, we came to Arizona. I'm glad somebody feels that way. Amen. But here's the deal. Uh, this has been, uh, you know, I mean, I'm only 67, so I haven't had a lot of 20-year gaps in my life, but three, I guess, three and a quarter. But, uh, but uh, man, there have been some interesting moments over these 20 years. Flying by the seat of our pants, it seemed like. But you know what? The Lord's taking care of us at every turn. Amen. Amen. And I couldn't have ever figured it out. Never. It didn't make any sense whatsoever. Not one iota of sense. Not one thing we've done since we've been here has made an iota of sense. Amen. But you choose His way, and guess what? He's already been down the path ahead of you. And made provision. Amen. Choose his plan over your plan. Choose his word over your thinking. I mean, when it gets down to a debate between what you think and what the word of God teaches, that's not a debate. That's your being wrong. Amen. But how many of you know sometimes that's a tough choice? Do what the Bible says. There's sometimes when I just don't want to forgive somebody. You know what? They did it, and they need to pay for it. <laughs> and if God's not going to get them, I'm going to get them myself. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to give him till tomorrow at noon. After that, I'm going to whoop him on self. <laughs> Never works. Never. Does that mean it's easy? No. No, 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 no. Sometimes you have to choose what you're going to think. You have to choose what you're going to dwell on. Amen. He said, I will meditate on your precepts. I choose to meditate on the wonderful works that you've done. Amen. I choose what I'm going to let my mind do. If I don't choose, somebody else will choose for me. Amen. Failure to choose is a choice. <laughs> Amen. I don't uh, uh, pass any day that I can think of where I don't have to choose uh, to think according to God's Word instead of according to my own thinking about something. I mean, things get better over time. You, you start to eventually uh, form a few thought habits, you know. You know, I mean, you do. But in the beginning, for sure, I have to think almost about every thought. What am I going to think about? What am I going to choose to believe? What am I going to choose to allow myself to meditate on? I, I, my, my personality, my natural personality, is uh, really given naturally to, I call it self-pity. You know, I want you to know just how hard I had it, and it's probably your fault. Amen. I want you to understand how much I sacrificed just to put up with you. <laughs> Amen. But you know what? If I go down that road very long, I'll be under a bridge somewhere. When the world really is out to get me and they really have got me and there ain't nothing I can do about it, then why not just go get drunk? 
And I recognize that's a short trip. I don't want to go there. Amen. Amen. No, I have to take authority over those thoughts and get back over into the gratitude department. Amen. 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 Think on the wonderful things that he's done to bring you this far. We've come this far by faith. Let's not quit now. Amen. Choose what you're going to allow yourself to meditate on. Amen. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, none of that stuff will take you anywhere. Hallelujah. And then the final verse. I like it particularly. I mentioned it in the New King James, in the 32nd verse. He said, I will run the course of your commandments, for you shall enlarge my heart. I'm going to choose to run the course. Everybody say run. I am going to finish the course, bless God, of your commandments. I'm going to stay on your word. I'm going to run. I'm not going to sit. I'm not going to dawdle. I'm going to run. I'm going to run the course that you set out before me. Hebrews chapter 2 said, run the race which is set before you. Amen. Lay aside the weights and the sins that so easily beset us, that tangle us up trip us up along the way. Put those things out of the way and run the race that's set before you. Amen. I will run. What's that mean? I ain't going to quit. What is that? That's a choice. I choose to press on. Amen. I find that once I choose to press on, then maybe about a third of the way down the course, I start feeling like it. I don't mean that to be funny. I think, was it Winston Churchill? Somebody very famous uh, said most of the great things in the world are done by people that didn't feel much like it. Amen. <laughs> the real secret to most success is just getting up and starting. and Keep stumbling in the right direction. Amen. I will run the course of your commandments. Everybody say, I ain't going to quit. Amen. That's a choice. Are you listening to me? Perseverance is a choice. We mentioned the word patience. There are two different kinds of patience. There's patience with people, and then there's patience in staying with something. Amen. Both of them are, are good. We ought to do both of them. But sometimes staying with stuff when you don't feel like it is a significant difficulty for some people. Have you noticed that? Uh, that's one of the biggest reasons many people don't succeed. They quit. <laughs> Amen. I think oftentimes we quit and give up right before the breakthrough. But, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. I don't run because I think I'm going to reach a place of breakthrough. I run because I believe I'm on the right path. And the man said, run. Amen. I'm just the hired help. The man said, run, run. Amen. When can you quit? When he says stop. Amen. And he said, uh, when you do that, he said, for I will enlarge your heart. What's that mean? An enlarged heart. I used to be a real runner. I mean, that's what I, for years and years and years, I ran miles. For many years, I ran every day, but after a while, my knees told me that wasn't such a hot idea. <laughs> so I cut back to three, four times a week. But, you know, just on an average week, I'd run 25, 30 miles. And uh, uh, the, uh, the cool thing about that was that uh, when I started, I had high blood pressure, and my pulse rate, resting pulse rate, was probably 80, 85. And uh, now, even now, I quit running in 2011 uh, because of my, my back. Now I ride a bicycle. You got to ride farther on the bicycle. I much prefer to run it, but, <laughs> but you do what you got to do. But but the, the point is this: I, I used to go to the doctor, and they get all worried about me because my blood pressure would be like 90 over 50. You know, and my pulse. They go out and get a cup of coffee between beats. You know, be like 45. You know. <laughs> Amen. What do they call that? Runner's heart. Over time, if you just keep running the course, you will enlarge your heart. 
You know what that enables you to do? Not rest. It enables you to run further. <laughs> it used to take me a long time to get my pulse up to 100. I had to run long ways before I'd ever get, you know. Amen. I was at the, uh, in the hospital one time years ago, and, and uh, they got me up in the morning to take my vital signs, and they took my pulse, and it was like 40, and they were calling all the medics and stuff. It's fine, don't worry. Give me a cup of coffee and let me do a few sit-ups here. We'll be good. Don't get freaked out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But that's what he was talking about in this verse. I will run the course of your commandments, and you will enlarge my heart. What does that mean? I'm going to be able to believe more. I'm going to be able to do more. And I'm going to be able to continue farther. The farther I run, the farther I can run. Because in the process, my capacity grows. Amen. Take a few moments in this next couple of days and just make some choices about how you're going to live your life in the year that's coming up. Amen. It'll do you good. Amen. Let's stand up. Hallelujah. Will you all still love me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Oh, I promised I would say hello to all of you who remember Sue Ricketson. Remember Sue? Yeah, so she's in California, California Florida. Said she'd be back sometime in the spring. So It's been a long journey for Susie, but she'll be back. I just miss everybody so much. Yeah, you know, Sue. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We worship you tonight, Lord. We worship you tonight, Lord. We worship you tonight, Lord. We praise your holy name, Jesus. Jesus, you're so good to us. You're such a wonderful Savior. We just magnify your name. We just magnify your name. Lord, I just love to say your name. Jesus. 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 Oh, what a beautiful name. Oh, what a glorious name. Oh, we thank you that you have magnified your word and backed it up with your name. We thank you for that. We thank you, Father God this night as we just seek your face that you will come in and sit down with us have a bite to eat rub a little ointment on our eyes provide us with some pure gold tried by fire oh we thank you and praise you thank you and we praise you we thank you and we praise you for bringing us your word that is spirit and life and allowing us to partake what a wonderful repast you set before us in our daily bread. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for opening the eyes of our understanding that they might be enlightened, that we might know the hope of your calling, the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints, and the exceeding greatness of your power toward we who believe. Oh, that same mighty power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead rises up in us. Oh, and carries us to be seated with you in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, every name that's named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for strengthening us with might by your Spirit in our inner man. Oh, that we might have the love of Christ dwelling in us by faith. Thank you, Lord for demonstrating, showing us that we might experience and know the love of Christ that passes knowledge, filled with all the fullness of God. Show us the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, the love of God that's beyond our capacity to understand. Thank you, Lord, for that glimmer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the mirror of your word and the person of the Spirit that allows us to not kid ourselves. Let us see ourselves as you see us. And then thank you, Lord, for helping us to transform, helping us to transform into the image 
of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your glorious word that inspires us, strengthens us, feeds us, builds us up, and revives us again, just as you said it would. We thank you for that. Praise you for it. We thank you for that. We praise you for it. We set our mind upon your precepts. We set our heart upon your kingdom. We set our desires upon the desires of your heart. And we thank you and we praise you as you enlarge our heart. Increase our capacity for faith, for love, for endurance. Thank you, Lord, as we run the race that you have so graciously set before us. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen.